5,000 years ago, long before the Mayans built Chichen Itza, long before the pharaohs were entombed in the great pyramids of Egypt, and long before the first stone was set at Stonehenge, at the very dawn of civilization, native peoples of what is now central Mexico were already familiar with the cotton plant native to South America. Huddled in caves, these ancestors of the Aztecs were already gathering spinning and weaving cotton into cloth. Millennia later, before the first Europeans had sailed for the West, the Aztecs had built an economy based heavily on cotton. As the Aztec Empire expanded, they demanded that their conquered subjects pay tribute. Among the most prized of their demands was cotton, the material that they used for their armor and for their religious robes. Every year, at the height of their empire, they collected bolts of decorated woven fabric and thousands of bales of raw cotton. By the time Columbus set sail, Europeans were already familiar with cotton. Arab merchants had been bringing cotton fabrics from India along the Silk Road for several hundred years. Columbus encountered cotton when he made landfall in the islands of the Caribbean. This discovery only reinforced his mistaken belief that he had landed in India, and that the peoples he encountered were Indians. The cotton that Columbus found in the Caribbean, and the cotton that Cabeza de Vaca encountered later in Texas, were two different plants. The cotton that Columbus found was a variety known as Sea Island cotton. This plant produces a very long staple cotton that is used to this day in the finest cotton fabrics, However, the plant is notoriously difficult to grow, and it requires a climate generally only found along coastal areas. Today, this cotton is known as Pima or Egyptian cotton. The cotton that Cabeza de Vaca found in Texas comes from a hardier plant that is adapted for inland areas like the southern United States. While this plant is much easier to grow, it produces cotton that has a much shorter staple and is not as valuable. This cotton is generally known as Mexican cotton, or more commonly, upland cotton. Perhaps the most important difference between Sea Island and upland cotton is the seed. In order to spin raw cotton into thread, it first must be cleaned of its seeds. Sea Island cotton has a black seed that's easily separated from the cotton fibers that grow around it. Upland cotton has a green seed that holds tightly to the fibers around it. Removing the seed from cotton by hand is a very time-consuming process, and finding a faster method has been an ancient puzzle. In India, a device called a churka, or roller gin, had been developed that could squeeze cotton between two rollers and leave the seed behind. This device worked well at cleaning Sea Island cotton, and by the middle of the 1700s, it was widely used throughout the Caribbean. The Churka Gin had unlocked Sea Island cotton bowls, but the locks and the shaggy green seeds of upland cotton, those would require a different key. <laughs> 